Hi, I'm Brad Knowles, producer of Friday Night Flies, hosted by Scott LeBoldis and Scotty Holmes. Enjoy the show. Okay, Scotty Holmes, take it away, homeboy. Scotty Holmes, Friday Night Flies on Easter Friday. Good Friday. We're out here tying. Ethan, Brad, I. Scotty's in Barbados catching permit fish. That's what he was catching today, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I'm not sure what the hell he did. Yeah, he was posted here online. I'm sure you guys all checked it out. But he's in Barbados in the sun, and we're up here in the not so spring lake uh, weather that we're having here. Um, tonight, I'm tying up a the fly. I'm calling it the Wiley Coyote. Um, I'm calling that because it's mode, made mostly from, uh, from coyote fur. The tail's made from coyote and the collar's made from coyote. And as I was saying to the boys, I, it's just, it's, I was looking around at, when we were doing our photo shoot for posting on, on Friday Night Fly's website, we were, everybody cleaned their benches up. And as I was cleaning up my bench and going through my stuff, I came upon a whole bunch of things that I didn't actually know I even had anymore. And one of them was, was coyote fur. So looking at it, I was going, what well, it's got a, it's got a really unique kind of, kind of color to it. Man, you, you know what, Scotty? It looks a lot like the Moto Minnow, but with the fur twist instead of feather twist. With the fur, yeah. And I mean, the nice thing about it is, say you're driving along the road and you see a dead guy on the other <laughs> side of the road, you just... Roadkill! Yeah, roadkill, roadkill fly. That's what yeah. you should have called it. <laughs> the roadkill fly. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so let, let, let's go down. Let's get this going. We're getting busy here. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. We're down there. Okay, so there you go. I'll do one little quick spin. Man, that thing looks mighty fishy, bud. Yeah, Brad, we, we were uh, talking about moto minnows and how he, uh, how the moto minnow came to be, and it was Brad made a combination of a couple different flies, and put the best what he considered attributes together, and that's what the, is being sold at the store is sort of the fly that Brad designed, and it, it's it's a killer. I mean, yeah, you well, really don't need to go is just buy that fly and you're good, but. You want to waste a little bit of time and create something a little bit more unique. It's funny and how you put your own twist on things, right? Like uh, what, with the Moto Minnow, it was originally, well, there's a fly out called the Moto Minnow. Yeah. But it was really bulky and heavy. And uh, when it comes to streamer patterns, you don't want something that's too big and bulky because it takes too much water. Um, and there was another pattern that I'd been looking at called the, uh, the White Marabou Muddler. The White Marabou, that's what you're saying, yeah. And... They're really close to the same thing, except that the the white marabou muddler was quite a bit sparser, yeah. and it didn't have the mallard flank, which I think is key for a good good minnow pattern, because even when it's staying sta stationary, the the the, uh, the mallard, mallard flank. flank gives it movement no matter what, even if it's not moving and it's still moving. The modeling of a, of mallard flank is always. A good addition yeah. to any pattern. Yeah, you know? I mean, it gives it the fish scale look. It gives it a whole bunch of different things, you know. Okay, so, well, let's get busy. Okay, so first thing, we got our hook in the vise. I got my gold bead on there. There's a reason you guys are all one up in that moto minnow because, man, that moto minnow is a go-to pattern this time of year. It really is. It no, I mean, it's that's why I said. I mean, you don't <laughs> you don't need to really waste a whole bunch of time tying a whole bunch of different things, but. Um, at the same point. That thing looks really good. I, I, I'd like to see what it looks like in the water. Well, I have, oh. What, what hit it? It wasn't me. Oh, you know what it was? It was this. Yeah. What was it going on? I didn't hit it. All right, that's okay, so we got that on there. We got a thread on there. Now we're gonna put our tail on there. Um, you wanna look for these longer fibers that are coming through. There's a lot of the down, um on the f on the coyote and i'm not sure like i'm not sure whether there's a difference what cone head are you using there that is a gold i don't even know did you pull that on my box <laughs> no i have but i don't have a package with me uh that'll okay. be the one core good so what i'm doing here what i'm doing here is i'm just pulling off any of the little rough bits to start i'm not going to go too much on it if i do what i found is that i tend to pull out the longer stiffer fibers and that's what I don't want to do okay so I want my tail to be about a full body length and I'm going to wrap it on there a couple nice secure wraps and then I'm going to take my handy dandy tool now that I have it pr 
pretty much secure. I would never be able to hold it that secure in my hands. Now I'm going to brush all this out. And all I'm trying to do there is just get rid of any of the any of the downy type material there that I possibly can. And then I'm going to trim it. I'm going to wrap it all the way up. I find it gives me that little bit of body. And any bits of this of this uh, coyote that you trim away, keep it. It makes awesome dubbing too. Throw it in a coffee grinder. Okay, two seconds for what it's worth here. The boys are wondering what that's all about. Anyhow, we're going to hold the product right up there quick for you guys and you can read it. Sorry. I, I, I was... So that's where you get those beautiful cone heads. Super fly. Okay. So we're just going to tie up the coyote up the shank, build up her body a little bit. And then we're going to tie on our tinsel and our wire. Don't worry, Brad. I'm, I'm cutting down at the bottom end of your scissors. I'm not wrecking your scissors, okay? Oh, here, I've got wire scissors yeah. here. Okay. I kill. Okay. Yeah, when you start tying that on. $50 and $60 pairs of scissors. No, you, I, 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 <laughs> you don't want copper or lead scissors. Any, yeah. Okay, and then we're going to put our uh, rib on there. This is something that the the Moto Minnow doesn't have, and the Moto Minnow that we buy I have here doesn't have. It doesn't have the wire on it, and it doesn't have the tinsel. Um, the wire, as far as I'm concerned, is, and you have to put it, I want the gold side up, so I have to have the gold side down. The wire is essential. Anytime I tie a hackle up a fly, I wrap it with wire. Strengthens it, man. Well, Definitely. if you break it, I mean, if you break it in the middle, then it's over. That's over. It's done. So, I mean, it's an extra step. It's a little bit more work, but... Okay, everybody get back in. Oh, that one's, uh, it pulls out of the, yeah. you can adjust that, that yeah. tray, the trap is. <laughs> and we're just gonna wrap that back, trying to keep everything on the top, right back to where the tail starts. Those are pretty snazzy scissors, eh? Those are really nice scissors, well, yeah. Once okay. I bought those, uh, Boulder went and bought, a, bought himself a pair of those as well. Did he? Oh, yeah. And then we're going to tie on our hackle. So that's a saddle? Saddle. A white saddle. Oh, actually, it's... A, what is it called? Off off-white or something like that it was it was weird it was a weird company i've had it for a long time and then from there i'm just going to tie on i'm going to finish off my body before i wrap anything up and i'm going to tie on a little bit of senyo's laser dub and i love this stuff it dubs super easy and we're just going to wrap that up you know what? I've been using dubbing loops like a lunatic lately. Have you? Just, oh yeah, with that rotary vice man, just makes things so quick, so easy. I'm not quite used to this one. Used to, I have been to on mine because we have the rotary vice here now. I've been like, okay, I gotta, I gotta get my stuff together here. Okay, so I'm gonna dub this up. Well, I'll tell you, man, it was busy in here today. Spring. Everybody wants to get outside and do stuff. <laughs> First sunny day of the month. Oh, my nope. Goodness. Tuesday was sunny. Oh, was it? Yeah, I was skiing on Tuesday. I was over on the island. Been a crazy week for me. Okay. So we'll get rid of that laser dub there. Okay. And then the first thing we're going to do is we're going to tie up our rib. Our gold rib all the way up. Do one complete wrap on the back there. Yeah, I love, uh, if you look at any salmon fry, they've got most of them, like chum, uh, schnook, 
all of the, the big ones, they've got a like a black bar that goes up the body, eh? And that definitely would add to the fly, having, having that gold rib. Oh, uh, yeah, it's, it's kind of a thing. classic. Okay, so then we're going to take our hackle, and we're just going to wrap it up in the alternate white spots that go up there. Oh. Come on. It's got a little bit of a ball on that one there. It doesn't want to stay. You've got a hackle plier if you need one. What's that? You need a hackle plier? You good? No, it's good. Just made her, eh? Just made her. Okay. Yeah. We'll get Brad's little <laughs> handy dandy tool. Handy dandy. Actually, I think your daughter made that. Yes, she did. Well, it was I got the idea and she made them all. You know what? You need to make her uh, make me some more of those. She needs to make me some. That's what she well, needs. You know I'm, what? Mine's broken. I'm down to uh, all I got left is this. I'll and look at it, it's all I've falling got apart. A handful of popsicle sticks. Yeah. I'll send them home with you. Okay. So and then from there, then this is where I, one of the things I really like about. Um, I'm just gonna tie this off too, to a quick half hitch. Come on, get back there. Okay. Um, what was I saying? Oh yeah, the wire. Okay, so using your rotary vise to wrap up. Makes it so easy, doesn't it? Well, for, especially for this, because you can really wiggle it in between and it just seems to trap a lot less fibers. Okay, so there we are. Okay, we're gonna get rid of that. You got you said you have get those the, the anodized ones there, yeah. Okay, so there we go. Go through again with the handy dandy tool after that. Get all this brushed out. Yeah, get all be, this be careful though, you don't want to rip your tinsel. It's pretty it's pretty solid. If you, as long as you wrap it nice and solid, it's usually pretty good. It's not as brittle as it seems. Um, okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna wrap on, we're gonna do our dubbing loop and you don't need a big one. I'm only doing, as I said to Brad, we've been minimizing and minimizing on this that the coyote fur definitely balks out the head big time quick. Balks out the head big time quick. Okay, so there we go. We got our dubbing loop. And now we're gonna get, oh, by the way. I've changed things up, I went to dubbing hook. Yeah, you know, I'm still undecided as to which I like best with, best with this one here. It's kind of, I'm torn. I have trouble sometimes getting that little piece apart and blah, 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 so still a little bit yeah, undecided. If you, if you didn't have a rotary vise, it would be a very tough tool to use, that big, big uh, dubbin spinner. Yeah. It would be a very tough. Okay, so I'm just figuring out how much of this I, of this I want. Oh. <laughs> I just about dropped Brad's brand new scissors <laughs> on the cement floor. Yeah. I gave him the hairy eye, don't worry. Yeah, you, yeah he did, yeah. for sure he did. Okay, so. Okay, so we got that. All we're really interested in is the tips, this outer part. So we're gonna get it in the dubbing loop. Up to the top, I'm gonna put this a little bit of tension below down here so it doesn't come all out. 
And here's where you can measure roughly how long you want this to be. And I want it to be just heading into the tail. So do you cut that other end off? Do you, do you cut it shorter or what do you do? That's I guess we'll see here in a second, won't we? Yes, you will. <laughs> so yeah, so then what I'll do is I'll go through. And I'll get rid of all that and stuff and I'll say it again, don't throw that stuff out. No. Okay, and at this point, I'm just gonna spread it out a little bit. Okay, and then we're gonna spin. Man, I like that tool. I have one. It's useful. Okay. So you got the same tool? I got the exact same one. Okay, so we go like this, and then from there, oh, we'll use Brad's tool, seeing as I'm not fall apart. And then from there, a very aggressive brushing. I'm pushing it forward. I'm trying to strip out stuff. Any mat, if I see any directly matted stuff that definitely needs to be chopped up a little bit. Okay. So we got that on there, and then we're just gonna wrap that up and Use try not. Use the rotary. And tr oh yeah, okay. That'll yeah. make it even easier, bud. You want to palmer it a little bit. Oh, I tightened it up. That's why. Let's see, but it's opposite of mine. Okay, it's confusing me right now. It's really different than my vice. Yeah, well yours only goes one way. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so. I think that scares me, snap goes in loop. <laughs> What's that? Oh, just somebody. <clears throat> Willy. Willy 47. Did I scare him? Oh. Yeah, he thought your loop was going to break. <laughs> no. On a good day, it's Friday. No worries. He's got this dialed. <laughs> it's a good Friday. It's good Friday. That's right. It's not just Friday. It's a yeah, good okay. Friday. So there we go. And my loop didn't break, but it was close. Thank you, Willie45. You're, you're praying for me, hopefully. 47. 47, sorry. Okay, so we got that on there. And guys, that's, that is the hardest part of the whole fly. The rest of it's pretty simple. Okay, now our mallard flank. I'm just gonna build that up just a little bit. Sloping, it was sloping quite heavily inside, so the, fe the feather was just gonna zip in. Zip, zip in, in, yeah, so I don't want that. So I'll just build it up a little bit. I will take your hackle plier now, Brad. It's from the top drawer. Yeah. We're gonna tie that. Very good. Thank you. Bada bing, bada boom. Where did it go? Oh, there it is. Okay, it's no, you can't see it. It's fine. The tag, yeah. Yeah. Okay, so strip off. I should have done this beforehand, but I didn't. Put on that hackle plier. And we're gonna wrap. And wrap it good. I always found with modern plank, you didn't really worry too much about it because as soon as you put it in the water, put it on into place, and you just leave a little bit of a tag once it gets to the course end. And then you start peeling it back, and then you worry about it. Remember, I'm a nymph specialist. I tie like 80% nymphs. Little guys. Yeah. It's what I like to tie. I enjoy tying nymphs and those kind of patterns. I know I've been kind of pushing it a bit. I've been tying a lot of different things. See, lately. you've been tying a lot of different patterns from what cool. you usually tie this year, for sure. Yeah. I've been tying a few nymphs. And so you get a new vice, you get a new toy, it just inspires you, huh? Well, yeah, I mean, I, I've seen an improvement in my tying, too. Definitely. 
with, I have for sure. The, okay, so now we're just going to put on this collar. And I mean, device. it's up to you. Biggest thing is, is there we go. You can see there's a there's a dead oh, there's a dead spot on the bottom right there. So I want to make sure I cover that up. And I think that's pretty good. It's a little bit bulky on the red, but you can pick it out. Just want to fill in behind that cone, make sure it's not rattling around too much. And yep. Good to go. Oh, and then I'll just put a little bit more. So I want to get that. See, I should have put a little bit more thread in there. You're filling her up now, you can tell. <laughs> oh, come on. I'm trying to spin too fast. Okay, that's good. Yeah, it's one thing you don't want. Should have done. I should have done that first. I should have filled that up a little bit more when I said that it needed to be filled up, and I didn't. Thus, leaving myself a little bit too much space to fill. Come on, world. Things happen. You just gotta roll with it. Okay, now we're gonna whip finish. It's your your whip finish tool is different to mine as well. It's way faster actually. Should be the whipping finisher that one. Yeah, you think? Yeah, it's that fast. I use a Velcro for that. It makes this easy. Oh, you're just tucking it back in. There you go, man. There looks, you go, man. Looks beautiful. Very, very nice. Okay, let's see. I well, can actually see. Okay. You know what you do? Give that thing a little brush, that red blended in. But a bing, but a boom. Uh oh. There you go. Quick save. Quick save. Okay, there you go. Even though that the the head is a little bit out of control. That thing will catch fish like crazy. That thing's gonna catch fish. And and it's 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 a fairly easy pattern. Like I said, the dubbing loop's probably about the hardest part or finishing your head like I had trouble with. But you, yeah, you just wanna tuck everything in there. Tuck everything sure in. I yeah, I should have brought it a little bit further up, is all I should have done there. Not a big deal. Yeah. Anyhow, we'll go up top there, Scotty. That's okay. beautiful. Okay, well beautiful th pattern. There you go, guys. The uh the wily coyote on Good Friday, coming from Scotty Holmes. Give it a try. Tell me what you think. Uh, like I said, this. Oh, and the last thing I wanted to show you was. Oh, there comes the UV light. The UV. This whole pattern, Coyote, is UV. There Bring you go. it up a little bit so we can see it. There you go. Yeah, there you go. Shine around the light down on the bottom there. Yeah, there we go. Bada bing, bada boom. Boom, yeah. Nice UV fly. Fish are going to see it. You're going to catch fish. Um. Until next time, Scotty Holmes saying bye.